Hey guys, David Miner here from Solidarity Coaching and Counseling. I focus on helping young men in Vancouver, Canada, and in this video I'm going to be sharing my top five tips for helping engage men in therapy. So why should we care about helping engage men? Now you personally as a counselor or therapist might want to you know, reduce your dropout rate and such like that, but I think as a society um, we're recognizing more and more that you know, mental health is so important, especially for men who in the past have often not felt comfortable going into counseling. I think with COVID-19 that's changing. But uh, men are less likely to reach out for counseling. They're more likely to drop up prematurely. And at least in Canada, the suicide rate for men is 75% of completed suicides are men and 75% of overdoses are men. So I think we as a society need to do better at helping men. And as therapists, we can uh, improve that by you know, creating a counseling environment that's more comfortable for them. I think men also have to change and, and learn that it's okay to seek help. But we can do our part to, to ease that process. So the number one tip in helping men engage in therapy is having structure. There is a counseling firm in Vancouver, Manifest Wellness, is that they do this really well. They have it set on their website, the steps, what the first session will be, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, all the way through the process. Because as counselors, we know that uncertainty creates anxiety. For a man who's walking in, if maybe he's never been to counseling before and maybe feels incompetent with the process, if you can lay out for him a clear structure of how you work and your process, then he's going to feel a lot more comfortable coming back to you a second time. The second most important thing is using self-disclosure. So as therapists, we use self-disclosure when appropriate to normalize, to help reduce shame. And for men coming into therapy, they're already feeling a lot of shame about just the fact that they're asking for help or that they're needing help. So um, if you're already using self-disclosure in your practice, I would say with men, just give it a double dose. Um, use it quite often. I use it every session, often almost almost every single time because there's just so much shame in men about needing help that it really helps to break down and normalize that. The number three thing that you can do is to use humor in your practice. So that might not be something that you do, but I would encourage you to incorporate it if you want to help engage men in therapy because Humor can also break down shame and it can break down um, those uh, feelings of inadequacy, but it also helps to lighten the mood because often men, when I'm working with them, they come into counseling and they want a conversation. They want something that's a little more casual. And when you're bringing up these heavy things like trauma, depression, anxiety, humor can really lighten the mood and make them feel like I'm just talking. This is just a friend I'm talking to. I think, you know, great therapy should feel like that. It should feel like a conversation. But especially for guys, I think they appreciate that casualness and that um, rapport that comes with being able to share some jokes and, and some humor in session. Uh, the third most important thing that you can do to help engage men in therapy is to move. So they've done brain scans of men and women when their bodies are at rest. And for women, their, their brain activity uh, is still um, quite active. But for men, when they're not moving, their brain, it looks dead. It looks like a dead person. <laughs> so uh, when I'm working with clients, often I'll offer them to, you know, let's go for a walk while we talk. Um, that might not be feasible for you or might not be permitted by the weather, but um, if I'm like, for example, working with some youth and teens, you know, they're lying in bed or they're sitting in their gaming chair while we're talking. And if they're just having a lot of I don't know, as I can tell, like they're just tired or their brains not being engaged. I I say, hey, let's get up. Let's move. Let's just do, you know, some uh, some jumping jacks. Let's do some squats just for a few minutes. And that helps the blood flow get to their brain so that they can use their brain in therapy. And then the fifth thing that I would say to help men engage in therapy is try to use some coaching techniques. So as therapists, um, we already are using coaching techniques, whether or not you realize it or not. Um, and, you know, depending on your style, if you're, a, if you're a psychoanalytic therapist, you probably don't really use much coaching. But if you're a, a, a behavioral or a cognitive therapist, you probably do use a bit more coaching. But I would say just read up on coaching, learn about it um, and implement it because coaching is about helping empower people to reach their own goals. And it's about um, often focuses more on improving performance or optimizing performance, which men are often looking for. Obviously, men are also looking to process their emotions and, and deal with trauma and relationships, more counseling based stuff. But I think if you can have a coaching edge to your therapy, that is gonna, really going to help engage men. So before I close, I'll just share, share my top three resources as a bonus for helping work with men. So if you are want to help improve your skill working with young men, I recommend How Do I Help Him by Michael Gurian. If you want to improve your, sk your skill working with uh, men generally, I recommend Men in Therapy by David B. Wexler. And if you want to improve or add a coaching element to your, co to your counseling, I recommend 
Therapy with a Coaching Edge by Lynn Grotsky. That book is amazing. So thank you guys for watching my video. If you want to learn more about how to engage men in therapy, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you in the next video.